I, on the woodpecker today, I'm making cupcake towers. Some of you might remember the comment I made about making cupcake in my quarto episode last year. After making some and piling them as best as I could, I decided to make cupcake towers as Christmas gifts this year. I went to the lumber yard and bought four different species of wood. Cherry, the one I'm cutting right now, oak, maple and walnut. After cutting the cherry board smaller and making one side straight, I pass it into the thickness planer. I made all the scientific calculations for the best use of all the species on a sheet of paper. Then, with two patterns, I measured the length I should cut the cherry to make the second smallest tier. I cut all the cherry wood to this length. Then, with a pattern, I trace the angle on the piece. I screw cleats on the sled I made last year for the step tools. They are screwed to the first cut angle of each piece, 67 and a half degrees. Then, each piece of cherry is cut in half. I screw the two other cleats for the second cut and cut all the cherry triangles. I spread glue on the edges of the triangles and glue four of them together to form a half circle. First, I clamp them with a band clamp, then a normal clamp between two wedges that I made earlier. Then, I do the same thing with the maple boards. To add even more colors, I rip a mahogany board, surface it and cut some triangles out of it. To cut the smaller triangles, I add a filler strip to the cleat. This way, these triangles will be smaller. Then I cut all of them. I move the cleat for the two bigger triangles, cut them, glue them together, and clamp them just like I did for the small ones. After cutting a bunch, I realize that I can use the waist and make more triangles out of them. I just need to spread some glue on the edges and clamp them with blue painter's tape. I make sure the glue line is really tight. To do so, I stretch the tape and stick it to both pieces. I wait for the glue to dry, cut them to the right size, and glue semicircles with them. I do the same thing with the half triangle of maple, oak and cherry to make the base. After several days, I have enough semicircles to make all the cupcake towers. I just need to glue a full circle. But I have a small problem. The edges are less than ideal. They need to be cut straight. So I stick sandpaper on my sled to prevent the half circles from moving while I cut them. I simply need to cut each center straight. I need to cut a wedge shape to clamp both halves together. Then 
Then I glue them together. I only clamp them in the center with the help of the wedges I had cut earlier and leave this to dry. The next morning I have a bunch of circles which look more like stop signs than anything else. Because I use a lot of glue, I ended up with a big mess. So I use a drum sander to sand both sides straight. After several passes, all the stops are sanded at 60 grit. 60 grit is really rough. So I sand them again with the sander at 80 grit. When they're all sanded, it's time to cut them round. It's a simple task with this jig. It's just a cut-off nail on a wedge-shaped movable arm. This will set the circle radius. The arm is locked with a knob under the sled. Speaking of the underside, it's simply two cleats screw at the width of my bandsaw tabletop and the last one on the back stop of the sled just at the right place, in front of the blade. I did this several years ago so I could cut my shop stool top and I haven't used it since. Cutting a circle is just a matter of drilling a hole in the center of a circle. The size of the jig's nail and putting this hole over the nail. I push the sled up to the back cleat, which is aligned with the blade and the nail. Then it's just a matter of turning the piece over the bandsaw blade. A few of them are done right now. I need to make the rest. I was unable to use my drill press to drill the hole of the bigger stop. So I did it with the hand drill. These are all the pieces needed to make six cupcake towers. Each piece is round, but its edge is really rough because of the bandsaw. To fix that, I screw a screw in the nail hole and chuck the screw to the drill. Then I sand the edge by turning the piece counterclockwise over the belt sander. Here you can see the difference between the three top sanded circles and the unsanded ones. When all the edges are sanded, I route a round over around each one. It's now time to make the central cube out of walnut. After making three faces straight, I cut the fourth one on the table saw. Then I route a half circle on each side of the board with a three-quarter round nose bit. Then on the table saw, I rip both sides of the board. If I put two of those together, they form a perfect three-quarter circle. But it's too perfect. The central post is too tight inside. So I return to the router table and rub the circle again with the freshly ripped edge on the fence. Now the pieces have an elongated hole a tiny bit bigger than three quarter of an inch. I just need to glue them two by two and clamp them tight. To clean the glue squeeze out, I proceed the same way I do when I clean my shotgun. I fold the paper towel and push it down the hole with a smaller dowel. Now I must drill the central hole 
of each tier. To do so, I use a 3 quarter inch drill bit. But drilling a straight hole with a hand drill is almost impossible. So I use this drill guide. This guide is badly designed. I must remove my drill chuck so I can screw it to the guide and put the drill on top. To remove the chuck of the drill, I need to remove the inside screw by screwing it clockwise. Then I chuck my biggest talon key and smack it with the mallet. Then I can remove the chuck and put it on the guide. Now I can drill the holes of all the big tiers. The small ones are drilled on the drill press. Then I tap all the biggest tiers and the bases. Then each hole receives a small chamfer on each side. This will help while assembling it. Now that the glue of the tubes is dry, I plane the sides straight. I measure the exterior of the tubes so I can figure out what to cut to make a square of an inch and a half and cut it. Next, each corner is routed with a three-quarter roundover bit on the router table to make a real inch and a half tube. To have a better control over my biggest tubes, I didn't route the last inch. Now this is a real tube and it's perfect. I just need to cut them to the right dimensions. I temporarily assembled one tower so I can measure the length of the central post. With that measurement, I cut all the central posts. Then I make dies on the end of each one. On the other side, I drill a hole of 3 8 with my mortising machine. This way, I'm sure the holes will be straight. Then I glue the finials on the ends of each post. While the glue is drying, I make the final sanding of all the tears. The sides are sanded with an inflated sanding drum. The last thing to do before applying the finish is to vacuum all the dust. I use mineral oil as finish on the towers and wipe it with a clean rag. Half an hour later, I remove the excess oil on all the pieces. Then I wait another half hour and remove some oil again while assembling each tower. Here are the cupcake towers I made as Christmas presents this year. One thing I can say is that each person who received one was very happy. Thanks, and I hope we'll see each other again for my next episode of The Woodpecker.